It's motherboard time, and this is the Asus X99 A2. A2? A2, Brutus. <laughs> it's home, you idle creatures. Is this a holiday? What? No, this is an Asus X99 A2 motherboard review. Ah. No, no, I'm getting mixed up. I'm not the one that actually has Broadway experience, so uh, this is just going to be a motherboard review. Let's take a look. Now, this is the second Asus motherboard that I've taken a look at for the Broadwell E refresh. Now, if you've already got an X99 motherboard, the good news is the Broadwell E, 99% chance is gonna work in that motherboard with just a UEFI update. Nothing really has changed with the socket or chipset between Haswell E and Broadwell E. Haswell E was released quite a while ago, even before Skylake. So Broadwell E uh, means that some motherboard manufacturers have updated their motherboards owing to the fact that things like you know, Intel Alpine Ridge is available. Um, there are revisions to, you know, voltage delivery, revisions to the PCH, maybe revisions to the PCI Express layout. And the X99A2 is no different. Now, the X99A2 is sort of the entry-level feature board um, from Asus, meaning that it is uh, still an enthusiast board, I think, because it's got a ton of features, but it is... Uh, not overly ostentatious. And we've already taken a look at the Strix, and actually the X99A2 shares a lot in common with the Strix. Uh, the board layout is actually almost identical. And so if we start by taking a look at the board, we can see that, you know, we've got our standard layout here, you know, eight DDR4 DIMM slots that supports 2133, 2400 out of the box. Uh, you know, for Broadwell E, although you can run up to 3333. So let's take a look at the PCI Express layout. Now, at first look, you've got six PCI Express slots ranging from, you know, by 16 to by one, but the layout here is a, a lot like the Strix. The first slot is a metal reinforced slot. This is obviously meant for your GPU, and this is a by 16. And just below that by 16 slot is a by one slot. Now this by one slot is blocked by most video cards because most video cards are double height. Then you've got a physical by eight slot but it's actually by four electrical. However, it shares PCI Express resources with the Asmedia USB 3.1 controller. So if you want to run this slot at the full by four speed, you would have to disable your USB 3.1 controller. Otherwise, this slot runs at by one. And it also shares another PCI Express lane with the by one slot next to the coin cell. The next slot is uh, by eight or by 16, you know, depending on how many graphics cards you're running and if you've got a 28 or 40 lane CPU, and then you've got a by one slot. And then the bottom slot is a full by eight slot. Now, one other weird thing is if you're gonna run three peripherals in the three quote unquote full PCI Express slots, uh, with a 28 lane CPU, you end up with by eight, by eight, by eight. But if you've got a 40 lane CPU, you end up in the unusual situation of by eight, by 16, by eight. Yes, that's right. The middle slot is actually 16 PCI Express lanes. There's also an M.2 and a U.2. The M.2 and the U.2 share resources, so you can't use them both at the same time. You sort of get a pick. Do you want M.2 or do you want U.2? Let's take a look at the back panel connectors. Now the back panel on this, you've got the USB BIOS flashback button. If you're not familiar with USB BIOS flashback, it allows you to flash the BIOS uh, on the motherboard without actually having a CPU installed. Well, why is that useful? It's like, well, if you have an older Asus motherboard and you pick up a Broadwell E CPU, the UEFI has to be updated. If you can't boot the motherboard, you can't update the UEFI unless there is some kind of a mechanism that allows you to update the BIOS without a CPU. And so that solves the problem of getting a CPU newer than your motherboard. Now in this case, if you're gonna buy Broadwell E, the A2 is gonna come with Broadwell E support out of the box, but if Intel comes up with some other new Broadwell E model down the road, and it's not supported by the UEFI and the motherboard you pick up doesn't support it, you'll need to use USB BIOS flashback. If you've got an older Asus motherboard and you pick up a new CPU, you can use USB BIOS flashback to add support for the new CPU to your old motherboard. So it's a pretty cool feature. Next to that, we've got four USB 2.0 ports and a combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port. The PS2 port is great for people like me that are still rocking a PS2 Model M. Love my buckling springs. Next to that, we've got four USB 3.0 ports and the Intel integrated i218V uh, ethernet adapter. This is great because it's Intel. Now, three of these four USB ports are wired into an Asmedia USB 3.0 hub, and it does support, uh, you know, USB 3.0 boosts for quick charging and all that. And then one of these is wired into the Intel uh, PCH. Then next to that, we've got our USB 3.1 ports. This is provided by an Asmedia controller. There's no Thunderbolt or anything like that here. This is just USB 3.1 Type-C and USB 3.1 Type-A. That's 10 gigabit. And this does provide 36 watts of charging power, so you can do quick charging and the amount of power it provides is 36 watts. Then next to that, we've got our audio codec. The audio solution is a Realtek ALC 1158 channel high definition audio codec. Uh, it's got a power pre-regulator. Um, it's got 
uh, EMI shielding. It has 112 dB signal to noise ratio uh, on the playback output at the line out on the back and 104 dB signal to noise ratio on the line in for recording. Absolute pitch 192 kilohertz, 24 bit true uh, Blu ray disc lossless sound. Uh, DTS Studio, DTS Connect. It supports jack detection, multi streaming, and front panel jack retasking. It also has optical SPDIF out if you've got an optical receiver that you use with this. Let's take a look at the connectors along the bottom edge of the board. Here at the bottom edge of the board, we can see that the Crystal Sound Solution does use the premium Nishikon audio capacitors. Then we've got our front panel connector, our digital SPDIF out header, an RS-232 header, an RGB controller. Yes, that's right. The X99A2, Brute, has the RGB header. So that's pretty neat that they actually included the RGB controller um, on this motherboard. Then we've got power reset or Q code readout um, for helping us diagnose and troubleshoot problems. We've got our TPM header, our first of two USB 3.0 front panel headers, and then we've got our two USB 2.0 headers to use for internal peripherals or you can use with a breakout cable if you so desire. Then we've got our front panel header, then we've got our direct key, and then also our temperature connector. There's also an external fan board header. So like all ASUS boards, you know, this thing's got six headers total, five fan headers, a one water pump header, and you can also use this external fan header connector to actually break out to an external fan board that gives you more temperature sensor inputs and more fan inputs. This motherboard has one external temperature sensor input. Now there's not one bundled in the box, so it's an extra add-on if you want to pick one of those up, but it just plugs into the header here and that gives you analog temperature readout. And then at the bottom corner, we've also got our first of, of five four pin fan connectors that also supports three pin fans. Then on the front, we've got our U.2 connector. We've got four SATA 6 connectors. We've got our one SATA Express connector, two more SATA connectors, and then our second USB 3.0 front panel header. And we've got two more SATA connections, another fan connection, our ATX power, our MEM OK button, uh, which will be useful for diagnosing memory problems, especially if you change memory or reinstall memory and the system won't post. You can hit MEM OK, reset your memory settings and only your memory settings in UEFI so you can boot your system. Then at the top edge of the board, we've got our 8-pin ATX power and 4-pin auxiliary power. Now, you, you can just use this with the one 8-pin 12-volt connector, but if you're going to be doing extreme overclocking or you have a lot of peripherals, the other 12-volt connector is also recommended to supply additional power to the board. And then we've got our three fan headers at the top here. One's for a water pump, one's the CPU fan header, and one's the optional CPU fan header if you're doing you know, a push-pull configuration with a tower cooler, or you've got you know, a 240 millimeter radiator, something like that, and you wanna run both fans on the radiator off of the motherboard's fan controller rather than the water pump's fan controller. Just above the first PCI Express slot, we've got another four pin fan connector that is controllable from the UEFI. Now, of course, dominating the board layout, we've got your uh, socket 2011-3 CPU socket and your eight memory sticks. This is pretty much the same layout that we saw on the Strix X99. It's got pretty good keep out clearance around the CPU socket and all that kind of thing. And overall, the, the layout is pretty intelligent. So let's talk about two things with the software on this board. Now, the first is that this comes with Dual Intelligent Processors 5, which is, um, which is sort of a whole system optimization with a single click, basically perfectly consolidate. You know, the advertising stuff from Asus is you hit the button and it basically optimizes the system and, and we let it run. So with this particular motherboard with our 6800K, we loaded the 6800K in here, we hit the button and we let it go. And when we loaded the 6800K in here, you know, we know that we can hit 4.5 gigahertz on the 6800K on some cores. And we know we can hit 4.3 gigahertz basically across the board with that CPU at about 1.375 volts. And you know, holy crap, the ASUS software, we let it run for an hour, it did its stability testing, it did the whole reboot thing, rebooted a bunch of times. It got the overclocked 4.3 gigahertz, completely automatically. So that's pretty cool. If you're, if you're an overclocking noob and you just sort of wanna watch the process and you wanna let this thing run and overclock and do its thing, hey, dual intelligent processors, you just hit the button and you let it go. It's pretty awesome to see that, you know, quote unquote on the A, which is kind of the entry level-ish enthusiast board. It's at a pretty aggressive price point for the, the features that you get. The other software component is Aura. Now this isn't the first motherboard uh, with Aura, and actually this is the second motherboard that we've taken a look at that has Aura, but Aura is the lighting effects controller. So you get the RGB header and in the box uh, is included an RGB header extension cable so that you can plug your LED strip in, uh, not directly to the motherboard, but to the extension cable so you can route the LED strip however you want. This is supporting the, the sort of standard inexpensive 50-50 um, LED strips and so you can run the LED strip directly off of the motherboard directly from ASUS's Aura software and that software lets you control the lighting with music or uh, you know CPU parameters or other system parameters or it can breathe or pulse 
change the color. You've got a color picker, any color under the rainbow. Unlike putting in you know, an LED strip that is one particular color, you can just change the color. And the color will also follow suit with the lighting on the motherboard. There are LEDs located on the motherboard underneath the lock tabs of all four PCI Express expansion slots. And so those expansion slots will also sort of follow with whatever the lighting effects are that you set up in the Aura software. So the really interesting thing here is that this is on an A motherboard and this is sort of the white color scheme. The Strix motherboard that we looked at is sort of the black color scheme. And so this is this is black and white with a little bit of blue accents, but you know, the shroud and the uh, accoutrement on the heat sinks is white. So that's pretty interesting aesthetically. Now overall in terms of overclockability and stability of the system really didn't run into any issues. Um, you know, this is, this is the, the X99A, it's not really designed to be pushed as far as maybe some of the ROG parts and maybe some of the really high end parts. But, you know, honestly, for our testing, especially testing at 6800K, which is only a 28 lane PCI Express CPU, um, basically didn't have any trouble. There was, we didn't really run into any issues at all um, in, in doing the testing. One of the great things about the ASUS UEFI is if you're going to use an alternative operating system like Linux and you want to set up your fan profiles and your temperature control and all that with all your different fan headers, even if you get the add-in board, which gives you even more fan headers, you can do all that in the UEFI and you don't need any software utility to do it. But to take full advantage of some of the other features this board offers, you really do need to install the utility. Things like fast charging work better with the software, things like the uh, dual intelligent processors and the automatic overclocking and that kind of thing really does work better with the software. And the software has gotten better, <laughs> either the machines have gotten faster or the software has gotten better about not feeling like bloatware. I've actually come to not really mind the bundled software, I know, sacrilegious, it's crazy, um, with these particular motherboards. So. You know, take that for what you will. But hey, it's not actually bad. And, you know, RGB lighting is not really my thing either. But I have to admit, I have actually had a lot of fun with it. It's like, well, I can at least use this for, you know, ambient lighting. Because usually the case is like under a desk or, or behind a monitor. And it's like, wow, having RGB lighting under my desk, you know, lighting my feet. That's kind of neat, I guess. So I'm, I've, I've sort of been inspired by that to build something special. And so that and all the RGB stuff that we saw at Computex. So I'm gonna work on a special project and if it never gets off the ground, you'll never hear about it again. But if it actually works out, then it might actually be something neat. And it's like, what? No, black box under the desk? No, don't turn into one of them. I don't know, it'll be fine. So if you picked up one of these, we wanna know what your experiences are. Let us know in the forums at techsyndicate.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.